Hi everyone, my name is John Doucette. I'm a PhD student at the University of British Columbia working at the UBC MBI Research Center. And I'm here to talk to you about my work, MATLAB to Julia, Hours to Minutes for MRI Image Analysis. First, a quick introduction. So what does MRI have to do with Julia anyways? MRI actually sits at the intersection of many subfields of scientific computing. Signal processing, optimization, partial differential equations, computer vision, big data, and deep learning, just about everywhere now. And until now, MATLAB and Python have been the dominant language of MRI. Quick uh, MRI crash force before we get started. In MRI, you have magnetic fields that probe the composition of objects within the bore of the scanner. The data you get is typically a 3 plus 1 dimensional time series of complex valued MRI signals, and even signal scans are actually rather big. So you might have 10 or more volumes of relatively high resolution for hundreds of millions of measurements in total. On the bottom, we see one sort of pipeline called quantitative susceptibility mapping, which aims to map the magnetic susceptibility at each point in the brain. On the left is the input data. This is the phase of the complex MRI signal, which is proportional to the local magnetic field. And you, you, by solving Maxwell's equations, you can determine the susceptibility sources in the brain. It's rather difficult. On the right, we see a failed attempt by a naive algorithm. And so we can already see that numerical computing is very important in MRI, and there's lots of trade-offs and tricks and optimization methods that are needed. But actually, in traditional MRI, since data is naturally acquired in frequency space, you really end up depending a lot on FFTs. So it's very hard to beat Professor Stephen G. Johnson package FFTW, which is written in C, and so until quite recently really, MATLAB and Python have been pretty much fine. So even QSM was rather FFT dominated for a long time, and until modern MRI, it wasn't too much of an issue. But now we have lots and lots of complex pipelines that are starting to push the limits of these pre-made packages that we can just use out of the box. So we have non-Cartesian data acquisition, so you have maybe non-uniform Fourier transforms or other fancy interpolation schemes iterative nonlinear image reconstructions. And in this talk, we're gonna focus particularly on voxel-wise optimization problems. So in fact, these images on the bottom here were generated by solving an optimization problem at each point in the brain. I'm gonna explain what these images are in a minute, but this will be the focus of our talk is how are we gonna speed up these problems you have to do massively in parallel that are very hard to write fast in interp or dynamically interpreted languages like MATLAB or Python. So these images come from something called myelin water imaging. Myelin water imaging is a post-processing technique which takes an MRI image and solves an optimization problem at each point in space to determine uh, various sort of maps that are sensitive to things like myelin content on the left. For each voxel, what we do is we project the MRI time signal onto a set of basis functions called EPG basis functions, standing for extended phase graph, which is an algorithm used to compute an MRI signal, which is more or less an ex exponential decaying function, but with some additional MRI physics corrections. So what we have to solve is a non-negative least squares problem with the Tikhonov regularization, where the matrix C here is a matrix of these basis functions, D is the magnitude of the complex magnetization, rather, MRI signal, and mu is a regularization parameter that also has to determine, and what we get out of it is coefficients for these basis functions, which are often referred to as T2 distributions in the literature, and what we get from those are these derived maps. So the myelin water fraction, which I measured, which I mentioned, which is sensitive to myelin, the local flip angle, which is essentially a measure of the imperfection of the magnetic field within the scanner, and the relaxation rate, which tells you more or less how fast on average the signal is decaying at that point. There's various bottlenecks in this algorithm that are difficult for MATLAB and similar interpreted languages to solve. For one, the EPG algorithm itself, which has to be run once for each column of the matrix C, involves many tight for loops. Similarly, the flip angle estimation, which might take 10 or more unregularized non-negative least squares solves, or NNLS, needs one of these matrices for each solve. And on top of that, you need another 10 regularized solves or more to determine the regularization parameter via the L-curve method. So this is a lot of computation that is not particularly friendly to MATLAB and similar languages like this, whereas Julia would have no problem with these sort of things. And I'm going to tell you how we managed to speed up this pipeline. So the EPG algorithm, as I mentioned, involves these tight for loops that in MATLAB are just too slow to even use. So 
its current implementation actually use sparse matrices to avoid this. So what we're doing is a linear operation on a vector of uh, magnetization states. And so what we do in MATLAB is to avoid the loop, you construct a sparse matrix, which can be reused, and you explicitly do sparse matrix vector products. And of course, rewriting this into a loop in Julia is just much faster, about 80 times faster, we found. And the reason is that you can Allied bound checks, you can do explicit SIMD vectorization using things like the SIMD macro, SIMD.jl, vectorization.jl, and turn this matrix vector product back into an action of a matrix vector product. Additionally, you can use tricks like statically sized vectors and matrices. So each of these uh, M's here are magnetization vectors that are represented as static arrays. And as a bonus, we get automatic differentiation. We get things like forward if.jl and zygo differentiating through this, no problem. Somewhat surprisingly, the NNLS solver itself is actually a bit of a bottleneck. So there's no tight for loops, and it is quite fast in MATLAB since you're just more or less doing matrix multiplications. So at this point, we already have the matrix set up. But nevertheless, it's five times faster in Julia. And the reason is pretty much just micro optimization. So memory allocation and these sort of things are completely avoided. You can just pre allocate a workspace, load it up, and solve the problem. So we use a fully pure Julia implementation of NNLS, which is a fork from the NNLS.jl package, and we managed to get a significant speed up from just these rather simple things. And finally, we found that the parallelism in MATLAB was uh, actually quite a bit slower than Julia. So MATLAB is, uh, their version of parallelism is just to launch more MATLAB processes and pass data between processes. And it's actually decent for mild water imaging because it's an embarrassingly parallel workload, but still Julia manages to scale better. And the reason is just that you have these lightweight tasks where you can pre-allocate and share memory between tasks, and you have automatic load balancing, and you can just stay within the same process. It ends up scaling well to many threads. And interestingly, on this log log plot of time versus threads, this is a 16 core machine, but it still benefits from overprescribing threads, which the MATLAB version of the computation simply does not. You can't use more threads or workers than you have uh, cores. You don't get anything from that. Whereas in Julia, you can get a little bit like, I think it's about 20% extra speed up just by overprescribing your threads. All in all, we ended up being about 60 times faster. So this computation that used to take hours is down to minutes, and it's just a huge gain in productivity for our lab. Uh, we have a package in Julia, dks.jl, based on the corresponding paper, Decomposition and Component Analysis of Exponential Signals, which you can check out if you're interested. The link to the repo is here, and there's also a walkthrough and tutorial uh, repository with example data and scripts, etc. I'd like to thank everyone for listening, and especially the UBC MRI Research Center and Center for Brain Health. And here's various ways to contact me if you have questions, concerns, comments, etc. Thank you.